What's going on smart people? In yesterday's video I gave a bit of a course outline for the two classes that I've had so far for physics grad school. Today I am joined by Kelly. Hi Kelly. Hello. Uh, and she's not in the physics department, she's in the astronomy department. So we're sort of going to be continuing yesterday's video in that I didn't talk about all three of my classes that I'll be taking. I still had one more that I had to take today and she's going to talk a bit about her astronomy courses. So with that being said, Let's get started. Now, in yesterday's video, I talked a bit about the course outlines for math methods and then for quantum mechanics at the graduate level. Today, the only one left that I'm also taking is classical mechanics. And as far as the outline goes, it's pretty similar to what you might have experienced in undergraduate. It's going to be a lot of Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. And then we're also going to get into things like rigid body mechanics, so get into the inertia tensor. Uh, small oscillations, so harmonic oscillator problems, principle of least action, obviously, and canonical transformations, which include things like Poisson brackets and Louisville theorem. So that's that's the course description, really. But when it comes to, uh, I guess, how things are graded and structured, we're going to be using the Goldstein book. And I see that the way that the grades are going to be divided up is that it's going to be 30% homework, 30% a midterm exam, and 40% a final exam. One thing regarding the homework that I've noticed is kind of a pattern for the graduate level is it seems like we're getting more than a week for every homework assignment. In undergrad, it seemed like a week was about, you know, the median time that we would be given to solve a problem or a problem set, whereas all of my classes so far, they say at least a week, which is kind of which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. There's a few more sections that we're going to be going over, like the central force problem and delve pretty deep into small oscillations, but that's that's just details that aren't too important. I think you get the idea of what classical mechanics is. The interesting bit comes with astronomy, which I'm excited to get into a little bit. So now we're going to be shifting this to something maybe a bit more exciting and less monotonous than talking about classical mechanics, and we're going to talk about astronomy. So Kelly, what are the three classes that you will be taking this semester in the astronomy department? So the classes I signed up for, there's actually four, but one of them is a seminar, and you don't have to take that, right? Okay. No, I don't. Um, that just teaches you how to give, like, scientific talks and stuff. But um, the three astronomy classes I'm taking are stellar spectroscopy, planetary sciences, and then galaxies one. It's a two-part course. So the first one, stellar spectroscopy, what exactly is that? That basically is just, like, looking at the physics of um, stars and their atmospheres and their photospheres. Walk me through the course outline of what you'll be learning in this class. So there's like 17 uh, different topics that we're expecting to cover. Um, I'm only going to name like a few ones that kind of stand out to me. Yes, I will have the other 17 listed here while she goes over some of the bigger ones. Classifications of stars based on their spectrum. Um, we're going to do like learning about analyzing emission and absorption lines in spectrum. Um, and then of course radiative, radiative transfer because that's like really important when you're looking at like collecting light from objects into a telescope and um, stuff like that. Those are the ones that kind of stand out to me that I'm super eager to learn about. Next, astronomy. The next course that you mentioned was planetary sciences. So again, break down the course description of that for me. Um, so that one's basically going to be going over like evaluating and analyzing um, observational data of the planets in our solar system. Um, I think they want to spend time emphasizing uh, learning about the atmospheres of those planets. So like stuff like the composition of the atmospheres, the structure, like the different layers in them, if they have layers or if they even have an atmosphere, thermodynamics between those layers, and just the, the evolution of those planets throughout the history of our solar system. It's kind of interesting that the first class you mentioned talks a bit about atmospheres of, of stellars, of suns, stars, stars, stars. there we go. <laughs> then this one moves on to planets, so mm -hmm. you will be well equipped to be like a, a uh, never mind, I'm not going to say <laughs> You said it. Great, so we touched on stars, we touched on planets. The last class that you said that you'll be taking is galaxies. So again, explain to me what you'll be learning in a course that's called Galaxies. Galaxies 1. Galaxies um, So this class is mostly about like the different techniques we use for observing galaxies, um, what those properties that we'll be observing are, and then basically like the basic components that make up individual galaxies like gas, dust, stars, black holes, dark matter. So I think we'll be learning about each of those. The easy stuff. Yeah, you know, pff, trivial. Yeah, I think we'll be learning about each of those individually probably, hopefully, because dust is really interesting. You'd be surprised. Dust? Dust. <laughs> Space Forget dust. about the black holes and the everything, dark matter. This stuff is boring. I want to know about dust. Well, it sounds like you're covering all your bases with this. You're talking about planets, you're talking about stars, and you're learning about galaxies. Yeah, so like not only do I get to learn about all the bases, the different bases of astronomy, but I also like that everything's really connected. Um, for example, like 
stellar spectroscopy, like understanding what stars are made of and how they form, is really useful for understanding how galaxies form and is also really useful for understanding how planetary systems form. So there's just like a lot of overlap, which makes everything easier to understand and absorb when it's all connected, you know? And so do your professors uh, imply that you're going to be using what you learn in one class in others? Yeah, definitely. Like I've even had a professor already tell me in the first week that like a lot of the things I hear in her class I'm going to be hearing come up in a lot of my other classes too. So I think that's really cool that everything is like... That they, that they merge together at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. So yesterday I talked about the physics courses that I'll be taking. I also talked a bit about that today. But we both got degrees in physics and we went down different paths. So you don't just have to stick with physics. So I hope this held a little bit of insight as to what courses you could expect to take if you choose to go the astronomy route. So thank you for taking the time to talk a bit about the classes. You killed it. You did really well. Love the cat photo bomb. I'm sure you guys did as well. If you guys have any questions about the physics curriculum or the astronomy curriculum, let us know in the comments section and we'll, we'll see, see you guys, guys there. <laughs> so cringy.